All right, guys, what's up? I'm going to do a 15 plus 10. Rated 1479, so I'm under my 1500. And opponent is rated 1626. So we're going to have to up our game to 1600 level in order to win. So it's an 11-5 game. So what that means is that, according to the ratings, my opponent is got a kind of a two to one chance, really. Okay, and we have a Sicilian, so I am going uh, Grand Prix. I've tried a bunch of different things, but the Grand Prix attack is still in the in the spirit of the Freddy, because you know we've pushed we've pushed e4 and we push f4, so it's like it's like the Vienna Gambit, and it's like throwing Freddy out there um, on in our repertoire with the black pieces as well. Go. This is interesting. You don't see that a lot. He's come out and pinned my knight. Okay. Now, this is interesting. So we, we have an issue. I'd like to castle, obviously. On a short castle, I'll get my rook on f1 behind the advanced f pawn. Um, I'm not concerned about this because queen will take, but the queen usually wants to come to e1 and then up here. But this is this is very unfamiliar. So what we have to do is forget everything we think we know and play what's actually in front of us. So he's made three pawn moves already, and now this bishop coming out. I mean, I could just play bishop b2. Bishop b2 kind of solves my problem. It allows me to castle. It defends the knight so that my queen is then free to move around the cabin. And that's what I think I'm going to do. So we've had a couple of good sessions. We've had Craig's session and James's session already this month for Chess Bootcamp Live. And, um, okay, so the queen could come out. I'm not concerned. The knight guard's here for now. So I'm not worried about this. And we have a, a big development lead. I've got three pieces out on the board and I've castled. That's worth five development points. Okay. Opponent has two development points and it's me to play. So we have development lead. Um, the move d3 looks kind of natural, building the uh, the S-shaped pawn structure. Um, does this knight want to come in here? Well, if he does, there's not a lot I can do about it. So this move then at least then releases my other bishop, so it makes sense. Um, I could move this knight, but why? Quite honestly. It's not like the rook's looking at f7, so. Coming back to the move d3. Does he want to come in here? Well, if he comes in there, I can play a3. So I'm going to play d3. I'm going to complete development and crack on with my day. And try to ruin Semir Cantus from Bosnia and Herzegovina. One of the most distinctive flags. Okay. Hmm. Now, one thing I do notice with this move is that now the bishop can't go to that square. So if I was to play h3, right, he can't come back because g4 then pins or traps and wins the bishop. So if I play h3, he's going to trade. And how do we feel about that? In the context of he's probably going to want to do this and probably going to want to do this. So... We're trying to think a bit better than we normally think. Okay, he's going to trade off this knight. I don't really want to lose that knight. There's a part of me that's thinking, let's move the knight away and get rid of the bish. I think I like this knight. I think he's got potential. And with the opponent, with all these... Look at all, all the pawns and light squares on both sides of the board. Really makes life... I mean, if you're this bishop here, where are you going to go? You've, you've got currently two squares and maybe capture the knight. That's it. So this is not a bishop with great prospects. Now, I could push h3, <clears throat> but then he'll trade. Um, 
Yeah, my hunch is that more than developing, I don't know. Well, if he takes and takes, I end up with the light squared bishop. Now, I'm just not comfortable with that prospect. So I think the opportunity is now to save the knight. Now, if I push forward, he could kick me with f6 or h6, and then where am I going to go? No. So it's a case of coming back. Here gives me the possibility of this square, which if he castles, I'm still not going to take on there, am I? His queen defends. But this does block in the bishop for now. So how about this move? Let's give it a go. Knight will probably just find its way back to f3 anyway. So it's... Now we have bishop tension. I think white is better at this point. If he takes, I think we recapture with the queen. I mean, knight recaptures is an option. Do I want a knight here? It's the question. Well, he hasn't got many forward prospects, has he, from there? So I think recapture with the queen. Leave this knight guarding the center like he's doing. So, over to black. Black now has the initiative. It's black now to introduce the next play. Okay, Fianchetto Bishop, targeting Knight. Knight is defended. I'm not too worried. Um, I could even just bring my Bishop to D2, which would really de-encourage him from taking, and, and I think that's the idea. That's what I'm going to do here. His pawns are a bit on the shabby side. That's defended, right? The knight is defended. Obviously, this is all good. Um, the bishop's technically not defended, but this this pawn's all good. I mean, he's he's got some coordination, but what he hasn't got is much kind of forward reach. So, what do we do with that with that information? Ha! Oh, you're throwing check, huh? If I put my bishop here, then he takes the knight and messes up my pawns, which ain't, again ain't, ain't too bad. If I put my king in the corner, I might bring my knight back to f3, maybe annoy the bishop. Just probably don't even want to trade that bishop. If he wants to trade for this one, I can recapture with, with, with my bishop, that's okay. So king in corner is fine. So tomorrow is five weeks without a cup of coffee. I have, however, had a cup of hot chocolates, but not like packet dust hot chocolates, which is loads of sugar, proper kind of charcuterie chocolate melted into a mug of milk, which is nice. But I'm thinking in the new year, I'm going to go sugar free, carb free. See how we go. When my 90 day challenge starts, Might even give you guys a link to that. I've got a uh, video that I made for it to promote the Big Fat Challenge. Let me know if you're interested. But for now, let's focus on the chess. I think Knight of Three, Knight of Three will come at some point. The question is, do I want to mobilise this rook, or do I want to get my queen out into the board first? I'm like, I like the fact that, you see, I've got major pieces here, right? So really zipping up the E file and the F file. Um, so one question we should ask is, is it time to make a pawn break? We've practically completed development. Yes, my knight is awkward. Um, but I don't think my position would be improved any by putting the knight in front of this rook. So F5 here. If takes and takes, that comes with an immediate check. Which knight can block? 
Okay, he's reinforcing f5 here. He didn't want to put his knight here, probably because of that, I don't know. But also, I'd, I'd like to unleash this bishop a bit more as well. This knight right now on c3 doesn't really have any ideas of his own. So this is a thought. I mean, but takes and then pawn takes, and my knight's uncomfortable, or takes and knight takes, and I've got a knight right up in my face, which I don't want either. So takes, takey, 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 and the knight would actually be pinned. <sighs> or move the knight here with the idea of moving it on. But again, then where? G5? It's possible. The question is, is this, so it's a, it's a matter of timing. Is this the right time to do this? He's got three attackers, but I've got one, two defenders. Pawn takes, pawn takes, pawn takes there. But this one would be pinned in the case of two exchanges. What about this move? This move will probably be met by d5, then kind of blocking up the e-file. There's no point in that. f5 now. I think it's the right thing. I think we can. And I don't think I need to spend time moving this knight around. I think we need to open up lines towards the enemy king. Also notice now with this, ooh, I have bishop h6, which I didn't notice. And that stops him from... Okay, so here, if pawn takes, I can actually safely capture with the rook. I could also throw this move in as well. In fact, if that, I've got bishop g5. And the knight is then pinned against both the king and the queen at the same time. It is, however, quite well defended. <coughs> knight, queen, king. Although, then I have also knight to d5 putting a third attacker. So whether he take, well, no, I kind of need him to take, but he's more, is he more likely to push? I think he should probably push, to be fair. But then I still have this. And the knight is still pinned once against the queen. It's just not pinned against the king. <sighs> yeah, I'm not approving of, of Black's position here at all. Oh, there's a funny one. Okay, the other thing I'm thinking about is like queen here, putting pressure on f7. If I was to push, he just moves the knight. So he's probably thinking of long castles, which also is 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 trepidatious a word. I think it probably is. If not, it should be. Um, there, probably pawn takes, but then I've got to check. There, queen takes. Well, I'm taking anyway. It it feels right. Okay, he's played queen takes. Um, so this now is not a real threat. Trading queens feels like it would play into Black Sands right now. Um, I have knight here, but then pushes and he can force a trade of queens. Queen here is not a bad idea, but then that's in my knight's way. My knight's going to want to come to here. My a rook may want to come to e1. Um, queen can't obviously go here or here. Can't go there because queen takes. So is this the move? Pins this pawn, puts double attackers. Actually, that also stops him castling, because the king's the second defender. So this is what I'm thinking. Yes. It, doesn't it feel a bit like having opened up the centre there? You know, if we'd simplified down, we'd be in quite an equal position, right? I've got tight pawns. Right? He's got clumsy pawns. He's got one, two, three pawn islands to start with. Right, So th these guys are singletons here, these two. 
um, which ain't the easiest to defend. So he can't castle because I simply win. I could even capture with a rook, then putting pressure on here as well. These paired knights are doing a reasonable job, covering quite a few squares. Okay, he really wants to get my queen off the board. And I really don't want to let him. Um, I can drop him back. This is playable. That's not. So we can discount that. Out, 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 out. Uh, so I've got one, two, three, four. This reinstates the pressure on that. Also means this pawn can't move. Oh no, no the knights are defending each other, remember. Okay, still love to get in this move at some point. I think knight e4 looks tidy. Okay, really want to get rid of this knight as well now. Hmm, this pawn's hanging. Um, but this is just there. Do I want to play this move now then? It, it hangs a pawn down down on b2. So do I do that? For, it just feels really slow. Um, this, does he just do that? Okay, let's stick the knight in the middle. Might drop a pawn, but then I, I can always kind of skewer the bishop. When it moves, I can grab this pawn. And then look at his situation. Four pawn islands. Which does favour yours truly in the ending. I might also push c3 now. Depending on what he does. We see this b2 pawn is not a hugely important pawn in my situation. His b pawn is actually probably more important. Because his king's got very little shelter. He can not castle short now. If he wants to engage this rook... He's either going to have to move it forward or castle. Huh. Okay, he's castled. Right, my first thought is this, but we never go with our first thought immediately. Okay, we've got some attacking on here. I'm going to kick the bishop out. That's a no-brainer. I mean, also now I've got the c2 square for my knight, if I want to do that. Could come here. Now it feels like we need to find an attack. Nothing going on that square. But, you know, knight could come in. Patience is a virtue. Okay. He might have ideas about coming after me here. Um... I have a check, and then I can improve my knight. I'm going to throw in the check, because it also defends h2. It attacks h7, which is defended only by the queen. He's in check. There's not a lot you can do about it. Yeah, queen could go here. Okay, now, feels like now it's time for this knight to get back in. Let's reconnect the rooks, and let's start doing things properly. Okay, do I want to harass that bishop? But knight f3, I don't know. It's a semi-open file, but it's a semi-open file on my king's side of the board. Or well, this. Takes, takes. I'm going to play rook b1, just on principle, line it up with the king. We might have ideas about b4 break. I'm starting to rush. Why am I rushing? I've got seven and a half minutes. This joker's got under ten minutes as well. Okay, he's moved his king twice. That's very well defended. That's defended three times. This is defended only by pawn. D4. Takes, takes, takes. Um, 
Yeah, I need to do something with this knight, and I'm going to bring it out this way, I think. Now. They are slow, but I do love my knights. Is b4 even a move? Takes opening stuff up. Why not? I like the fact that my opponent's h pawn is still there. I would not like a rook on the h file. If we traded bishops, huh? Well, scratch that idea. Very well defended. I have to come back here, don't I? Yep. And now suddenly it's black that, you see, I've got all my pieces now on three ranks. And he's got all his on four ranks. But, it's like Swiss cheese, isn't it, it's position. It's not the cleverest. Here's got one, two, three attackers. I've got one, two defenders. I'd like to get my knight back on the light square where it opposes that bishop. <sighs> He's going to have to try and make something happen as well. Even with this kind of shattered structure. Yeah, I'm liking that. H5. I don't see the value in that. So... Here. Then here. I'm not sure what he's doing with this pawn. This pawn is... This is one of the issues with an isolated pawn. It can't do much on its own. All you do is you stick something in front of it and then it's out of the game. Even something like this. Not too worried about weakening the light squares. But then that gives him something to attack with pawns, isn't it? If he pushes this now, I'll just come to here anyway. Quite an unusual Grand Prix. Okay, I have this. And I'm playing it. Not thinking too hard about that. The bishop is really the only attacking piece he's got against my corner you know, in conjunction with the queen, right? And now there's no bishops on the board. Material is equal. I have slightly better king safety, for sure. This pawn is well defended. This pawn is defended twice. This pawn ain't defended at all. And the king is not looking too clever. So what we need to do now, we need to activate our knights. And the key is going to be getting knights into this kind of area. Get them up the board where they become stronger. They power up, do knights, the further up the board they get. Four, five, six, seven. Very powerful ranks for knights to be on. Queen's the only defender of this pawn. Can I attack it again? Not in a hurry, I can't, no. I'm thinking knight c4. No, I mean, there's a check, but what's the point? Is h, sorry, a4, a5, is that even a thought? Kind of give my knight an anchor there. 
I mean, right now he's got a knight that could even capture it on there, so I don't know. B4 takes, takes is definitely a thought. Okay, I'm not too worried about this knight. It can't go there and it can't go here. Is this his idea? Try and make me take it and then recapture with the h pawn, giving him the h file. Well, we're not going to have that, any of that kind of nonsense. Um, here. Opening up lines around the king can only be a good thing. This queen can jump into life at any point. I mean, she might even, you know, jump in with a, an immediate check and then an attack can start. I am, I am practicing trying to be a bit more circumspect and patient with my attacks, and Blitz doesn't help you do that. You play trashy throw away. Yeah, slutty chess. You need to you need to respect your games. You need to, you know, treat them like a relationship, not a one night stand. Um Yeah, it just feels right. I, I still feel like I've got an edge. I think that the um, what's the graph going to? I think the graph is going to say white's done done all right. Not sure black's been better so far, but you never know. The engine sees deeper than man. <sighs> okay, he's attacking this upon. I'm not too concerned, you know, if, if I could throw these pawns on the floor, I would, you know. So do what I do, take here, take here, take here, allow him to take, then my rook's under attack, or do I just push up and attack this knight? There's a bloody thought. Attack the knight, he comes in here anyway, I attack him. Okay. I've still got this at the end of the day. Okay, he attacks queen. So, oh, interesting. I can go here. Right, if I go there, we trade queens, don't want that. If I go there, knight takes. I've also got here as well. So, this looks good though. If queen here. Okay, he's got two. Oh, hang on. That's looking a bit checkmatey, isn't it? Oh, have I got to do this? So if I go there, queen there is mate. If I go here, queen there is mate. I did not anticipate that. He's done well there. I might as well pre-move the, the capture. I mean, it's, it's still not the end of the world. Queen's coming off the board. I'm going to have double pawns in the ending against two singletons, which is less than ideal. But we have a pair of knights each, we have a pair of rooks each. Whose pawns are going to be the easiest to defend in the ending? I don't know. It's a toughie. So I missed this idea. Didn't even look at that possibility. Okay, there we go, we have to recapture. This is defended. This knight is not defended, by the way. So I could, for example, go here. Then he's got to move, and he can't take me because I repair my pawns. Ah, oh, attack twice. Right. And after all that, I'm a pawn down. Okay, well, I'm opening up the B file. Why not? Can't take there. Um... Oh, 
All right. If he's attacking this, it's defended. <sighs> hmm. One, two, three, four. And I'm a pawn down all of a sudden. Just one good move is all it took. Knight could come around there. Double defend this pawn. This pawn's going to be a weakness. Could put my rook on the other open file. Knight to here looks okay. Could go there. Tax this pawn. takes, I repair my pawns. We're both on four minutes something, uh, and there is of course the 10 second increment. So it's going to be a tough, a tough call now to save this game. Can't move that. Taken a pawn takes. Okay. Now my king can come back around here. I don't have to do that now though. Uh, that looks nice. King comes around, pawn there, I just take. Now this knight has to defend this pawn. You can come here, covering this square. But then... Hmm. Attacking this. He might come here. Always got that. King up guards these squares. It's on 350 now, but it's okay because he's got the increment. He's got the increment, she. <sighs> These knights are facing off. I'd like to like, come round here, but I can't. If he takes yes, I reconnect these pawns, but being a pawn down, and the key pawn is probably this one, isn't it? This D pawn here. So, and it's currently undefended. See, currently my pawns aren't under attack, but some of his are. Oops. And he's using his time, 225 now.
He's trying to come up with a, a winning plan, isn't he? Okay. Um, I can come here. Oh no, that hangs this pawn. So do I need to defend the rook? Sorry, defend the knight. But if then he comes here and he attacks the, the pin piece, um, I come here, I defend the knight. Here, takes, takes, I've got two attackers on there. Here, takes here, I take his knight, takes, I win a pawn back. Here he takes pawn, I take knight, he takes pawn. Hmm. Here I just drop a pawn. And I come back to there. Sorry. There, there, there. Looks interesting, but why <sighs> there? Go on then, let's try it. I mean, this I just drop a pawn outright. Here I'm, I'm promising to dislodge his knight and then get something in here. Um, It's very unclear. My opponent is now down under two minutes, so there may be a mistake if we get into a time scramble. Okay, what's the point in that? Now I can attack the rook, and then I've got two rooks on here. Or I come here, knight takes, no. Here then, let's try that. Got rook takes. I think I'd probably take. I want to leave one rook on the back rank just to just for protection. Takes and then this knight covers stuff. There, there. It's a potential checkmate. I mean, it, if I take if I had three goes, one, two, three, that's checkmate. Oh, well that was unexpected. Attack the knight. It's gotta be, I think. He can come here, but then attack him again. Then I've actually got two attackers on there, which is F5. One minute fourteen. I like this classical kind of mindset where it's just about doing what it takes to get the best result you can. He's under a minute now. He can't take the pawn right now because I take his knight. The knight comes here, I'll probably just come there. He's got a check, but it works, pawn takes. Thirty-five seconds, mate. Come on. That light moves. Okay, if I take, takes and takes, that's not mate, because I've got this. So, do it. Yeah, he takes my knight. I, my rook comes out, he comes here, there. I 
Okay. Now I can't move this rook because the knight is there. Okay, so I'm going to move my knight and I'm going to move it here. He may trade off rooks. My knight would love to go, hang on, I can't cover this, okay, trade. Still on 30 seconds. He's still a pawn up. But this pawn is hanging. All right, uh, that's a check. And it's a fork. But it drops this pawn too. two attackers on here and I can't defend can I I think it's gonna be rook takes so I have to go there He's now got two attackers on there as well. Okay, it's all over. It's all over. Well done. Well done. Interesting one. They all turned on that knight coming in. Yeah. Totally winning now for black, but let's see how the game went. I felt like I held my own. Okay. I felt held my own for quite a while. I had one great move. He had two. Okay, so let's go, yeah, bishop g4, ropey, that's excellent, bringing the knight straight into the middle. And d4, whoa. Okay, but here we're all, we're, we're doing fine. Yeah, bring that knight, oh, it, sank it, it did say kick the bishop. Right. This is good. I mean, what was the accuracy on this? 79 against 85, yeah. Okay. Here again, we're slightly better. Knight a4 was best. Oh, yeah, looking at a fork here, look. Not that my opponent would fall for the fork, but it, it makes him do something he doesn't want to do. Best move like that. Queen h3 was better. Yeah, because we're blocking the knight there. So very, very tight. And then that's a mistake. And that was a miss. Knight f3. Let's get the stupid knight off the back rank. And then really from this point, it goes kind of yeah, knight f3 again. See, I, kept, I said that knight would go back to f3 and I didn't do it. And then it just got shabby here. Yeah, so this is, this is the key move. But it's not the great move. Okay, and then going on a bit longer, it looks like there was an opportunity here that I missed. That's a mistake. That's a great move. That was my great move, okay. And then here, I should have... Oh, yes, hanging pawn. Why? Because its defender is pinned. 
right? That was a free pawn. Could have equalized there. It's negative 1.2 pawns here, not a lot. But after this point, yeah. Opponent did, did very well. That, that, was a, that was an interesting game. And it does feel like when you play at this pace, you are expanding your, your capability. Um, but yeah, my opponent did outplay me there in the ending. But yeah, I'm, I'm quite happy with that. Quite happy holding my own against 1600s. That'll do me. Okay, hope you enjoyed it, guys. Thanks for watching. See you later.